Hello everyone, it's been a while. Welcome. This video is the first in a series of videos I am making on installing Windows 1 through Windows 10 onto one single laptop. In this video, I will be giving an overview of the setup and the important things to consider when multi-booting all these versions of Windows from one laptop. There are many factors to consider when selecting a laptop that can run all the versions of Windows. This is because Windows 1 was released in 1985 or nearly 35 years ago. Hardware expectations were very different back then. Windows 1 and 2 came on 720KB 3.5 inch floppies. Windows 3.11 came on 1.44MB 3.5 inch floppies. Windows 95, 98SE, Mi 2000, and XP came on CDs. Windows Vista 7, 8.1, and 10 came on DVDs. So the laptop needs to be able to boot from all these different forms of media in order to install Windows easily. While making a bootable USB drive is an alternative route, but that does introduce one more complication into an already complicated problem. RAM is also an issue. Windows 95, 98SE, and Mi will actually crash and fail to boot if the laptop has more than 1GB of RAM. However, on the other hand, Windows 7, 8.1, and 10 cannot be installed on a system with less than 1GB of RAM. There is a solution to this gridlock situation which I'll show later in this series. Storage is a whole nother can of worms. Windows 1, 2, and 3.11 run on top of DOS. I chose MS-DOS 5 because it is in the perfect spot between being new enough to support partitions larger than 32 megabytes, but still old enough to support Windows 1. For reference, when I installed Windows 1 on MS-DOS 6.22, I ran it but there was no cursor. DOS 5 uses the FAT16 file system, which supports a maximum partition size of 2 gigabytes, and a maximum hard drive size of 8 gigabytes. Windows 95 is limited to 32 gigabytes. Windows 98 SE and 2000 are limited to a hard drive size of 128 gigabytes. Only Windows Me, XP, and newer can support the hard drive sizes that are commonly available today. On the other hand, Windows Vista needs 15 gigabytes of free space to install. Windows 7, 8.1, and 10 need 16 gigabytes of free space each to install. This introduces yet another conflict. The hard drive or SSD is divided into partitions. In hard drives, this division is physical. In SSDs, this division is only logical. The layout of the hard drive is placed in the beginning of the hard drive and is called the master boot record or MBR. However, the MBR can contain at most three primary partitions and optionally an extended partition at the end. The extended partition can contain any number of logical drives. Unfortunately, Windows 1, 2, 3.1, 95, 98SE, and Mi all need to be located in the first primary partition. Additionally, the partition boot record at the beginning of the partition needs to be in the first 8GB in order to be bootable. Windows 2000 and onwards can be in any primary partition or logical drive. We already see here another irreconcilable issue. Now, the laptop I selected that can satisfy all these requirements was the Toshiba Portage R500. This was because while being relatively light, it still had a built-in optical drive and supported booting from USB floppy. In addition, it has drivers from Windows 2000 all the way up to Windows 10. Thus, I could expect a fair bit of compatibility. It had 2 gigabytes of RAM, which could run Windows 10 without too much trouble. This laptop is old enough to have support from Windows 2000 onwards, but still new enough to be able to handle large hard drives and can still run Windows 10. I also chose a 256 gigabyte SSD to use with this, but I only used less than 180 gigabytes of it. Regarding the issue where 6 operating systems all want to be in the first primary partition. Luckily, Windows 1, 2, and 3.1 all run on top of DOS. Thus, they can all be on the same first primary partition. 
Windows 95 can also run from the same partition if upgraded from Windows 3.1. Thus, with four of these operating systems on one primary partition, the other two primary partitions can be used by Windows 98 SE and Windows Me. Using XOSL as a bootloader, I can then selectively hide partitions and mark partitions active so that these operating systems think they are on the first primary partition when booting. By hiding the partitions not in use, I simultaneously make the first primary partition the one I want, and I also get around the 128GB limit that some versions of Windows have. The overall boot sequence looks like this. When the laptop boots, it goes into XOSL. From there, I can select to boot into the Windows 95 boot menu, Windows 98 SE, or the Vista boot manager. If I select the Windows 95 boot menu, then I can either boot into Windows 95 or into the previous version of DOS. From DOS, I can launch Windows 1, 2, or 3.1. If I select the Vista boot manager, I can then select to boot Windows 10, 8.1, 7, Vista, or an earlier version of Windows. If I select an earlier version of Windows, I then go into the Windows 2000 NT loader, which I can boot into Windows XP, 2000, or Me. It's not the cleanest boot sequence, but it works and there's relatively few hacks involved. Now that I've explained the overall setup, let's get started. Links to all the software I am using will be linked in the description. I need MS-DOS 5 and all the versions of Windows I'll be installing, along with their keys. This would include Windows 1.04, Windows 2.11, Windows 3.11 for work groups, Windows 95 RTM retail upgrade, and the full installs of Windows 98 SE, Me 2000 Professional, XP Professional, Vista 7, 8.1, and 10. In addition, I need PTSDE, which is a disk editor program I can use to directly manipulate the MBR. I also need XOSL, which is the bootloader. I also need EZBCD, which is a program I use to manipulate the boot menu for the Vista boot manager. These are the programs that will be run from the laptop. There is other software I will be running from a secondary PC. Raw write for Windows to write floppy images onto 3.5 inch floppies. Image burn to burn images of CDs and DVDs. Almay Partition Assistant to create and edit the partitions on the SSD. And Almay Backupper to make backups of the SSD. It's always a good idea to make a backup after each operating system install, in case if something breaks later on. It takes around 8 hours to install all the versions of Windows, not including the time it takes to make backups. After installing Windows, it may take 8 more hours to install updates, drivers, and to configure it to be exactly the way you want. Now, if you're ready, let's begin. First, I will connect the SSD to the PC. Using Almay Partition Assistant, I clear all the partitions existing on the drive and wipe the data. This is so that the MBR gets cleared of any information. Then I create the partitions. A 1GB FAT16 primary partition for DOS 5, Windows 1, 2, 3.1, and 95. A 6GB FAT32 primary partition for Windows 98 SC. An 8GB FAT32 primary partition for Windows Me. A 16GB NTFS logical drive for Windows 2000 a 16GB NTFS logical drive for Windows XP, a 32GB NTFS logical drive for Windows Vista, a 32GB NTFS logical drive for Windows 7, a 32GB NTFS logical drive for Windows 8.1, and a 32GB NTFS logical drive for Windows 10. Be sure to leave a gap of 8MB between each of the drives. After the partitions have been created, hide all of them except for the first one. Mark the first partition active. This prepares the drive to be recognizable by DOS 5. They should all look like this in the end. Then copy PTSDE and XOSL onto the DOS 5 partition. Please check out the next video to see how I install DOS 5, Windows 1, and 2. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. 
Thanks for watching.